This is a special edition of Deep Dive Wednesday, and we're gonna take a look at a, an awesome profile of what Inspired Church has been over the past 20 years. And you'll begin to see not only the heart of our senior pastors, Pastor Mike and Lisa Kai, but you'll also begin to see how this vision that started 20 years ago has not only grown, but is continuing to grow in the years to come. Let's take a look. I'm standing here in front of the Waikela Elementary School where we started in 2001. And for about eight years, this is where we called home. Set up, tear down, incredible time, incredible time. Glad it's over. I mean, there was no air conditioning in that thing. It was super hot. I called it the underground emu oven because it felt so hot to have church there. But that's where we started. That's the humble beginnings. That's the pound for pound principle all began right there. Uh, our services in the cafeteria, and you know, every cafeteria looks like a cafeteria. We would do setup for about three hours. Uh, excellence in everything we do. It didn't matter if it was a school, how was it we're gonna how we're gonna transform it so that people could experience God. Mike was meeting in this little school and I said, Mike, you are so much bigger than this little school. What is your what are your dreams? He goes, Okay, get in the car, come with me, come on. You can hear you know, he, he's rather intense, Pastor Mike. Kai. He goes, Come on, get in the car with me. So we drive over, um, from the elementary school to Y. Kelly, which is probably about, what, five minutes. And he goes, this is my dream. My dream is to have this Ashley Furniture Store. I go, well, let's get after it. He says, what do you mean? I said, come on, we have, we call those things that are not as though they already work. So Mike and I literally got spread eagle, putting our hands above the doorpost of the Ashley Furniture Store. And here's a Howley boy and a local boy assuming the position, but there are no police officers. And we're calling down heaven. Through prayer, petition, and uh, calling it out. And of course, Pastor Mike being proactive in everything. Lo and behold, uh, he got introduced to the right people. Don't you know that in a short time later, um, Ashley Furniture did the miracle deal and the church was in Pastor Mike Kai's hand. And the rest is history from there. Wasn't that a great look back at the beginnings of Inspire Church? And here we are standing in the middle of the very place that Pastor Mike and Pastor Lisa had been praying and contending for along with the church way back in the early 2000s. And here we are today and so many things have happened as a result of Inspire Church being right here in Waikele. Yeah, it's amazing. And so many families have been transformed and one couple in particular that was here left and came back. And actually it's a story of one of our pastors who recently joined the team. Hi, my name is Sachiko. We have been mailing for almost 13 years, we have a beautiful kid, Eliana, Elister, and Ethan. And my name is Dominic, and uh, you just met my much better half, Sachiko. We first came, uh, discovered Inspired Church, uh, back when it was Hope Chapel, West Oahu, uh, back in 2010. And I remember um, when we uh, came here, I remember us walking in the doors and just really feeling the presence of God here, right? Mm -hmm. um, and um, we just felt so at home, we felt so welcome. We even got involved in a connect group. I met some really amazing people, really learned the true definition of a potluck. Then uh, while we were here, um, we had been trying to get pregnant yes. uh, for a long time, uh, but we weren't having a, a whole lot of success. You guys prayed for us uh, that we'd be able to have kids, and by the time we left Hawaii, we were pregnant. We named our daughter Eliana, which is Hebrew, and it means God answered, because she was an answer to a lot of prayers, and this church was played such a major role in that. Um, and of course, because when God gives, He gives with abundance, He also gave us twins. <laughs> so we have twin sons, as my wife said, Ethan and Alistair, who are five, um, and it's, it's just amazing. I retired uh, from the United States Navy after a, a great career, um, but God was calling me, calling us out of one service and into another. Uh, and that service is to serve Him and build His kingdom as part of uh, the Inspired Church staff. So uh, I'm very honored and privileged to be the new young adults pastor 
and we're just so happy and honored to be back with our Inspired Church Ohana. We love you guys. Thanks. Wow, what an incredible story of Dominic and Sachiko and how they're back here making a difference as they've joined the team. And that's what Inspire is all about, inspiring people to fulfill their God-given potential. And so we wanna hear from Pastor Mike and Pastor Lisa on everything that God has done in and through them. So we'll get their perspective right here on this very special moment with our senior pastors. So we started in 2001. And starting in 2001, we wanted to reach as many people as possible. That's all we cared about. Um, but then as we started to grow, it was a slow process. It did not happen quickly. It was slow and incremental. And it was all about reaching people, making a difference in the community. As about seven or 10 years go by, we were always believing for something greater than an elementary school cafeteria. Although there's nothing wrong with that, but you have to grow out of it. So we believed for a building that we could be in and God opened up the opportunity. It's a full on miracle on how that took place that we ended up in the Waikele Shopping Center uh, to have a church. Like the premium spot in the state of Hawaii, we ended up receiving that. God gave it to us, our people saved for it and here we are today. But back then, let me tell you, it was a struggle. It was a real struggle just to believe that we could even be in it. You remember me? I cried, you didn't cry, I cried. <laughs> I, I, was I got more, you, I cried for us. I was more, you know, skeptical because, you know, we went from a school and we were- It was a huge it, leap. And it was a big leap, you yeah. know? We were, I think at that size, maybe 500, 700, 700 people. Mm -hmm. And when he would talk about Waikele outlet, you know, this, this shopping, center. shopping center. And he would show it to me, I'd be like, nah, it's too big. Exactly. And I would actually, Ex like I, I didn't have the faith that he had. Yeah, you didn't, but that's okay. And eventually I came along, um, but I'm one of those, until I see it, then I'll believe it. Right, And so at, when, the time. at that time, and when we finally got the keys to the place, I can still remember that, that just that, vivid picture of that day when everybody showed up and in fact it was we were walking across over from Waikela Elementary School to this to this place and that was a it was very emotional because people were you know a lot of our members were with us walking it was like a crossover mm -hmm. and we came and we walked in and you know when you cut the ribbon got the keys and I still remember that picture you know because there's this shot that we took and I was carrying cars and she was literally about two years old and just seeing my husband so excited to get the keys and going in and literally saying you know I can take a lap in here and that's how huge that place it is. was huge it was very huge and and I think from that day I never doubted my husband's vision you know I I led children's ministry for 12 years and to step into a role as his wife and as co-leading with him was really different for me. And I wanted to make sure everything was done right. Um, and I still remember praying when we took this job to be the pastors of this church, I said, God, I don't ever want to do anything that you are not anointing, that you have not asked us to. And I want us to take care of the flock that you're going to give us. I want to make sure we shepherd him right. I want to make sure that we lead you know, in the, with, in the, with a godly life that we're gonna have be transparent, we're gonna have integrity, um, just everything that the word says as a leader. I went from being a youth pastor to a senior pastor of a small church, to a medium-sized church, to a large church, to a mega church, to a multi-campus church. Absolutely, my leadership has changed and I'm still changing. I, I'm always learning. I wanna learn more. Um, we, we never thought about ever changing our name. Um, a lot of churches or People change their names because of rebranding purposes or new seasons or whatever. So we weren't looking to rebrand. We weren't looking for a new vision, for a new mission, for a new, nothing, nothing, nothing. None of that happened, but I had a dream one night. It was before our conference. We had a conference, it was in our building, and I woke up the next morning, I looked at Lisa, I said, oh my gosh, you're not gonna believe. She goes, what? I said, we changed our name. She goes, nope. nope. <laughs> I said, what? She goes, no, we're not changing our name. <laughs> Right, it was a dream though, I told her, relax, it was a dream. I don't manufacture dreams, I had a dream. And so that morning I get ready and I drive to church, I don't even think about it a second time. And I walk in and one of my friends comes to me about 20 minutes later, he goes, bro, I gotta talk to you. I go, what? 
He goes, I had this dream about you last night. I'm like, oh, bro, you better tell me because sometimes to me, that's bad news, right? All right. So he looks around. He goes, dude, I was walking in your parking lot. I was praising God for your church. And I saw the name on the sign of your church. And God spoke to me in my heart and said, the name no longer matches the vision. I went like, no way. He goes, what? I said, last night I had a dream that we changed our name. He goes, no way. We we're like two little girls, like 13 year old girls. Ah. And uh, I was like, no, 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 don't say anything, don't say anything. So we didn't say anything. So we were done with the conference. And then one of my good friends who was speaking uh, from New Zealand calls me and he says, hey, Mike, um, I got a question. I go, what? He goes, have you ever thought about changing the name of your church? I'm like, no! Not another one. Right, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, wait, wait. Um, wait, I need more confirmation. I need more confirmation. And I did. I did because it was a big deal to change your name because nobody had changed their name in our denomination at the time. And I didn't want to be the first one. I wanted honor. I wanted respect. I did not want to dishonor anybody. So about a year and a half goes by and little coincidences like that, confirmation that I was denying, people would bring it up. You ever thought about changing your name in one way, shape or another? And finally, I just went, this one consultant came to us and he sat down. He goes, I love everything about your church. I love your, I love <laughs> your worship. I love your website. I love this, love that, love that. We could change this. We could tweak that. He goes, I just got one question. I go, what? He goes, did you ever think about, about changing, changing your, your name? name? I was like, no. I was like, who's putting you up to this? Did that staff member tell you that that's definitely, are you, are you setting me up? And he goes, no. He goes, calm down. I'm like, okay, I am calm. <laughs> he says, the problem is, is that when I Google the name of your church, Hope Chapel or New Hope Hawaii or Hope Chapel West Oahu, you don't even come up to a page two. Mm, that's a and I said, well, that's, that's a problem that we need to fix. And that's when we said, we need a name. And we were already doing the Equip and Inspire conference. It was time, it was hurting people finding our church. I don't want people to, nobody's gonna go to page two. Yeah. And I don't want them to sift through 40 Hope Chapels. By the way, great, great, Great movement, but I didn't want them to sift through 40 Hope Chapels to think that that's the one I need to go people to. people were calling us wrong names anyway. They're calling us not wrong names. Our names are too long anyway. Hope Chapel, West Oahu. You know, it's like, it's like, you're like, it's like, it's like, yeah, right. So finally, this leaves no room for doubt. So we already had the Equip and Inspire conference. I said, I like Equippers Church, but that's taken in New Zealand. I like Inspire Church. I like Inspire, but I was nervous because it's a big name. I was like, man, we're going to have to really live up to that name. Are we gonna we're going to have to be inspiring people to fulfill their God-given potential every single weekend. And I don't know if we could. But when I found out that the name in the Greek for Inspire shows up in the Old Testament and the New Testament, it literally means the breath of God or God, God breathed. So when God formed Adam with the clay, blew, blew into him, um, he breathed him, he inspired him. In Acts chapter 2, when the church was launched at Pentecost, the sound of the mighty rushing wind that was inspired, the breath of God, theos in pneuma, theon, theonustos. And uh, when I think of all that, I said, inspire, I like that, the breath of God. It sounds like God breathed, and I love that. Rather than a trendy name, it's not trendy, it's biblical, inspire church. I think the best way to inspire church remains relevant without compromising its biblical values is, is you stay young. I think that's the most important thing. Scripture never changes. Um, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, but culture changes, people change. I'm getting older, a newer generation is coming up, and even one below that is coming into church. And, and if you just remind yourself that, well, how do you want to reach them without compromising what you believe, I think that's the most important thing. So relevancy is not necessarily about, um, I can be 50, I can be 60, I can be 70 and still be relevant. It's not about how old I am, it's about how young does the church feel. I mm -hmm. think that's the most important thing. A multi-generational church. It's not a church only for some the teens, the 20s. Mm -hmm. It's not just a, a church for people with families. It's a church for everybody. It's for people who are senior citizens, and newborns and everybody in between. We wanna be a multi-generational church. Inspire Church Online has changed dramatically. From pre-pandemic, -pre we went from 700 people and an afterthought. It was almost like they were watching and peeking into our services on the weekend, hour and 25 minutes, hour and a half long, to all of a sudden switching, pivoting, ideating, innovating, doing everything we needed to do 
to reach that audience because we had nobody in buildings. So we did all of that, switched all of that. And now we were getting more people back into the building. We've also adjusted that as well. Our online family is so important to us. We have at least, seven, I'm gonna go 60 countries a weekend, 45 states. Um, it's incredible what, uh, what 14 months can do, what a whole year can do and how many people you can reach. And we attribute that to the staff at Inspire Church who just have made it all possible. No, online is actually one of our biggest locations when you think about it. It's a legitimate location. It is. And people do come in, log on every single week, and there's faces, there's names, there's people's lives, there's things that are we're praying for and believing for for people that are online. So it's it's amazing that it's kind of it's interesting that one day I know we're gonna see them in person somewhere. In 10 years I see Inspire Church occupying as much property and, and territory as possible. Um, there are cities and states and countries that we that might not be in our heart right now, but they're in God's heart. What the last year has taught me is to hold your vision lightly and allow the Lord to adjust it and change it any way that He wants. Because I had plans pre-COVID and none of that, or some of that is not even happening right now. But all I know is this, if we continue to trust God and be obedient and continue to work hard toward whatever vision and goal that we have, I'm sure all of the cities, countries, and states that God has on His heart will become on our heart. Mm -hmm. So we're looking forward to more churches in Asia. We're looking more towards uh, parts of um, North America uh, and of course, different islands in the state of Hawaii. It's really expensive here. We're looking forward to buying more property, building more buildings, and reaching as many people online as possible. How was that? Getting to hear from the senior pastors, Pastor Mike and Lisa Kai. And one of the things that Pastor Lisa said is they wanted to have the heart to shepherd, to pastor, to lead the people in this church that they were taking over. And they have done more than that. And from a church from 40 people to well over 6,000 now, what a privilege and honor it is to be a part of the ministry that God's called them to lead. Yeah, it's amazing. And you know, one of the things that I am really encouraged by is just seeing how marriages are being restored right here at the church. Here's one story of a couple whose lives, their marriage brought was healed and they were transformed by it because of what God did through the church. Well, I'm married to my husband, Brandon. We have three girls. My husband's a fireman, so he is not always home. And I felt lonely a lot of the times, you know? I felt like he was doing what he wanted to do, and I'm at home taking care of the family. He wasn't there, and when he was there, it was either my way or the highway. Like, this is our schedule. You have to, you have to bend, and this is just how it's gonna be. Things really took took a wrong turn um, about three years ago. I went through a depression. I just felt like he was totally checked out. You know, he didn't, he wasn't helping as much as I thought he should be and I had considered um, ways to hurting myself when I was pregnant with her because I was so depressed. Um, I wanted to hurt myself without hurting my baby. And at that point, I could feel my love for him withering away and I had found out some information that he was not living the life as a husband as faithfully as he should have. And that's when things really kind of took the turn for the worst. Um, I lost respect for him. Um, the end of 2018, that's when he filed for divorce. He wanted nothing to do with me. The turning point for our marriage, I believe, was Kings of Man Camp. And he was just, you know, really this different man. A man who was standing in front of me who was there to fight for his wife and to fight for his family and telling me that he knows what kind of husband he's supposed to have been. And at first, I still didn't believe it. I remember at the end of marriage conference, um, Pastor Lisa and Pastor Mike made us uh, write something to our, our spouse. And I couldn't, I couldn't even write to him, you know, and he grabbed my hands and I'm just sobbing, holding his hands. And he's like, I, I see you. He's like, I love you. You're my wife and I see you. And he's like, I'm so sorry for letting you down for all of these years. And it was at that moment where I just broke inside and I was like, God, I know. I hear what you're telling me to do now. You're telling me to give my husband a chance. 
and the things that were happening, you know, from that point on, I just cannot express the shift that I saw in my husband. He was a great father to our girls and he just over poured his love to me every single day no matter how much i pushed him away no matter how much i didn't want anything to do with him god showed us that i brought you two together for a reason i feel like i am so much stronger you know going through the process that hurt so much and that it was hard to go through but you come out of it so much stronger than you ever thought you would be able to That's it for tonight. We hope you had a blast going down memory lane, but also we celebrate, we end this September, this month long celebration of our 20th anniversary by really saying how much we love you. We are praying for you. We're pressing in. We're believing that the best is yet to come in your life in Jesus name. Until next time, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Aloha.